Hi there. We're about to start chapter 8. I wanted to quick do an intro video to chapter 8 just to prepare us. Uh, then there's uh, two uh, or so uh, review videos that I have planned and then uh, we'll get into the, the guts of chapter 8. Um, but the thing I wanted to talk about um, with chapter 8 is just a broad overview of what we'll talk about. Uh, what we're about to kind of dive into, and a coordinate system that allows us to talk about things a little bit better. Um, so chapter eight, chap chapter six was all about forces kind of in a line. Chapter seven was about Newton's third law and how we can have interaction forces um, and multiple kind of uh, motions of direction when we couple things together. But at the core of chapter seven, you were still moving kind of along a line. You might just have individual components of the system moving in different directions or different lines. Um, in chapter eight, now we're going to kind of talk about mo explicit motion in two dimensions for an object and talk about the forces on it. Specifically, we're going to be looking at um, uh, radial forces. We're going to be talking about um, uh, centripetal acceleration, how, uh, what forces give us centripetal acceleration, um, and we're going to just talk about uh, circular motion in general. Um, so uh, the next two videos talk a little bit about a review of, of uh, circular or rotational quantities, um, and then also uniform circular motion. Um, but what I want to talk about right now is actually um, this idea of uh, creating um, another coordinate system. Um, a lot of times we're going to call this uh, our cylindrical uh, coordinate system. Um, and basically it just allows us to, just kind of quick drawing out a cylinder here, it allows us to talk about any point on a cylinder in a very easy and natural way. Uh, let's try and line this up just a little bit more. And that's not too bad. Um, so uh, one uh, kind of direction in a, a cylindrical coordinate system is the z direction. We're going to label this z here. This is our direction kind of down the, the shaft of the, or the primary axis of our cylinder. Um, and uh, for, for our uh, uh, purposes right now, z is not going to be a huge component in, in what we do. The two big components that we have are R, which are, is our radial component, how far from the center of our cylinder are we, and then theta, um, which tells me something about um, kind of my, my direction um, based on, on my rotation around the cylinder. So that is our theta direction. And all three of these are perpendicular to each other, much like x, y, and z are. Um, but now it allows me to um, talk about uh, you know, uh, some, some theta here, some r out. Um, but maybe, maybe it's not the full circle. Maybe, maybe I'm only part, part of the way through some area. Um, it allows me to talk about um, position in a very different way. right? So I can define um, circular or, or, you know, sometimes this is called polar. This would be cylindrical polar because of the way that we've defined the z-axis as just still a linear axis. Um, and we would write vectors or, or at least positions um, as uh, r theta z. So that is um, one thing, um, one, one way of talking about things. We're actually going to use r theta z. Uh, a little bit more than x, y, z in this um, chapter. Notice that z is common for both of them. Um, it's really the x and y that are changing because again, in the x, y plane, we're talking about a polar coordinate system, a circular polar, uh, circular uh, system of, of coordinates rather than a rectangular one. So um, that's the intro for chapter eight. Um, and uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon another video.